programming is hard. Crazy, right? Now, this is obvious to some of you. I can already hear some of you. No way, programming's hard. What's next? The sky is blue. The earth is a donut. <laughs> there are some people, mainly beginners, who think it's easy. I think it's because of the day in the life videos that mainly show them working one hour and then eating lunch for another seven hours or influencers that are like, learn these technologies and get a six figure job in three to six months. Yippee. But surprisingly, programming in terms of writing code itself is the easy part. Programming at its surface seems like a straightforward task, right? Write some code that computers understand. However, the reality is far more complex because programming involves logical thinking, problem solving, and a deep understanding of both the problem you're solving and the tools you're using. So what I'm trying to say in a smooth brain way, programming is not coding. What? A lot of times people are missing an essential part of programming, the mindset, thinking like a developer. And this is the part that makes programming difficult for everybody, especially beginners. It's not the coding part, but the mindset. It's one thing saying, just code learn some JavaScript. It's going to be easy. Learn it in like a week, bro. But what they don't mention is all the imposter syndrome, all the late night coding sessions, and all the times you just feel stupid, like programming is not for you. That's never brought up. And I think it's because it's something that tutorials and books can't teach. You have to experience that yourself. Let me expand more on this whole developer mindset thing and give you some tips to help you develop this mindset faster. Imagine learning to cook by only memorizing recipes. You might know that to make a cake, you need flour, sugar, eggs, and butter. And following the recipe, you can bake a pretty decent cake. But what if you're missing an ingredient or added the wrong amount of an ingredient or someone asks you to bake something else because they hate cake? If you've only memorized recipes, you might be at a loss because you understand the steps, but not the principles behind them. This is similar to learning programming languages without understanding the underlying principles of programming. So you're basically a worse version of ChatGPT. Knowing a language like Python or JavaScript is like knowing or memorizing a recipe. Sure, it's important, but it's not the whole story. You can memorize all the syntax, but the bigger question is, do you know how to use the syntax? Here's an example. Let's say you've learned how variables, loops, and lists work. You then learn how to create a list of numbers and print each number using a for loop. The basic tutorial covered it like this. The next step is now to find the average of these numbers. And the tutorial did it like this. Let's say in your situation, I'm a strict professor and I don't want you to use the sum function because that's too easy. In order to calculate the average under this constraint, you need to understand what the sum function is doing. You should know that the sum is just all the elements added together. In the tutorial, you've learned how to iterate over lists with a for loop and perform basic arithmetic operations. So here's the alternative way to approach it. The tutorial didn't explicitly cover this, but it taught you everything you needed to solve this on your own. This example is pretty simple and kind of dumb, but unfortunately you'll encounter a lot of situations like this. Situations like you can't use this library, you can't use this framework, or there's times where a built-in function in one programming language doesn't exist in another. In cooking, this scenario is similar to adjusting a recipe based on a dietary restriction. Maybe you can't use a common ingredient like sugar. Instead, you have to substitute it with some alternative. You weren't directly taught this substitution in the recipe or in a cooking class, but understanding the role sugar plays in the recipe allows you to make the necessary adjustments. In cooking, once you grasp the fundamentals, you can start experimenting and creating dishes on your own. You're no longer just following recipes, you're creating them. The same goes for programming. With a strong foundation in the basics, you're not just copying and pasting code, you're crafting solutions from scratch. This is where the true challenge of programming lies. This is a programmer's mindset, problem solving and logical thinking. It's not just about knowing how to code, it's about knowing what to code. To develop a new feature or fix a bug, you need to break it down into smaller manageable pieces, then systematically address each part. This skill is something that's often overlooked in tutorials because it's something you can't really teach. It's one of those things where you're just gonna have to figure it out yourself. I can give you all the tips in the world and examples about problem solving. And yeah, you'll get better and maybe learn it quicker, but to fully master it, you have to do it on your own. You have to experience it for yourself because you can't master a skill of solving problems problems if someone else is solving that problem, right? In my experience, these skills took the longest to develop. And this is because all the learning resources, so tutorials, books, courses, they can't really teach these skills because they're meant to show you everything, each step, the reasoning, and how it all fits together. Tutorials are meant to help you get better at programming by showing you how to do things. But in order to be good at programming, you also need to figure things out on your own, something tutorials can't do because then it wouldn't 
be a tutorial. Pretty tricky, right? You need to balance using tutorials and doing things on your own. And this is why people end up in a situation where they know all this theoretical knowledge, but they have no practical knowledge. They know everything, but they don't know how to use it. It's one of those situations where you did too much tutorials and not enough things on your own. And this is when people start entering tutorial hell. And unfortunately, they may never escape it. Tutorial hell is a place where endless tutorials are watched and countless examples are followed, yet the ability to solve new or unique problems doesn't seem to improve. It's an easy trap to fall into. This is why the learning curve in programming is notoriously steep, because you need to balance tutorials and doing things on your own. But it's important to recognize that in order to escape tutorial hell, it's not about abandoning tutorials altogether. It's about how you use them. Tutorials are like training wheels. Eventually, they're meant to be removed. The real learning begins when you start applying what you've learned in different situations, when you start cooking without the recipe, so to speak. Many people quit before they reach this stage because programming is not easy. So what can I do? Well, for starters, remember that every expert was once a beginner. Keep pushing forward, keep learning, and don't hesitate to seek help from the community when you need it. You can always join my community. The link is in the description. But let me give you some tips to help you gain this programmer mindset. My first tip, break down problems. Master this skill, please. I'm begging. Start by breaking down programming problems into smaller, more manageable tasks. This approach makes even the most daunting problems seem approachable and gives you clear starting points. Now, I know I said giving you an example wouldn't help you master the skill, but it's at least going to guide you in the right direction. So let's do an example. Let's say I tell you to create a program that tracks and displays the top three most frequent words in a given list. Seems a little complicated, right? Let's break it down. Let's start by looking at the list and counting the frequency of each word. Okay, that still seems too complicated, so let's break it down even more. How about just looking through the list? Okay, now this is really easy. All we need to do is a simple for loop. Okay, so we're looking at the list. All we have to do now is count the frequency, so we can use a dictionary to keep track of that. And would you look at that? We solved the sub problem of looking at the list and counting the frequency. Now we can move up to the main problem. I'm gonna let you finish this because you need to get good at problem solving. This is the type of thinking technical interviews are looking for, so I strongly recommend practicing this skill. And if you want a resource that will help you practice this skill, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing, which is exactly what a programmer needs. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, I'm positive there's something for you. Brilliant believes in improving your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker, which is what you need to gain that developer mindset. Brilliant is also a learning platform that's designed to be effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method that's proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Plus, all the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in just a few minutes, with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. You still not convinced? Brilliant has tons of programs programming courses. You can start building programs on day one with their built-in drag and drop editor. And you also develop your mind to think like a programmer. If this sounds like the learning platform for you, and you'd like to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the coding slaw, or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Okay, let me give you another big tip that'll help you think like a programmer. Project-based learning. This is the definitive way to become better at programming. Why is it effective? Because because you'll be building stuff stupid and building stuff is good. Why? Because building things makes you use your small brain and using your small brain means problem solving and problem solving means good developer. Another reason is you're going to be building your portfolio and a portfolio equals experience and experience equals job. Job equals money. Now for my next tip, the Feynman technique. I'm stealing, I mean, borrowing this tip from Fireship like a true programmer. What exactly is this? Well, the Feynman technique is based on the idea that you truly Truly understand a concept only if you can explain it in simple terms. This forces you to break down complex programming concepts into their fundamental parts. And as you're trying to explain a concept, it's quickly going to reveal what you understand and what you don't understand. And it's going to guide you on what you should study more. And of course, teaching or explaining a concept to someone else or even to yourself out loud is going to help you solidify your understanding and it's going to help you with retention. You're going to remember it more. So I'm going to use this technique right now and I'm going to speed run these tips. My next tip, embrace failure as a learning tool. You're going to fail. You're not
not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're all going to fail. So you better get used to it. I've seen hundreds of errors and I've made hundreds of bugs. And at this point, I have a good idea of where something went wrong because I failed so much. So you should start failing more. Next tip, practice regularly and for a long period of time. Be consistent in programming. That's really obvious, but I don't mean practice for 30 minutes. That is not enough. Maybe that's going to work for your little baby leak code problems, but for actual programming concepts or projects, you're going to need a longer block of time. So maybe, you know, 24 hours, 48. <laughs> I'm kidding. One hour or more, at least. And my last tip, stop comparing yourself to other people. The only person you should ever compare yourself to is Elon Musk. Is yourself, obviously. You should not be worrying about anybody else except yourself. A lot of you keep comparing yourself to people that have been programming for years when you've probably been programming for less than a week. It's obvious they're going to be better than you. Celebrate how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how small it is. You did a tutorial. You solved some bug. It's something worth celebrating. So have fun making some errors, making some projects, and I'll see you all in the next video.